The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. We are back and this is theCUBE. We're here live at EMC World 2014. Um, here with my host, this is Dave Vellante. I'm here with Stu Miniman, uh, who is a networking and cloud expert, uh, principal contributor at Wikibon. And this is the drill down into storage networking. Uh, we've got Brocade here. Jack Rondini is the Vice President of Product Management and Data Center Storage and Solutions. Uh, Jack, welcome to theCUBE. Great to have you. Thank you. Thanks, so, big EMC world, obviously. Um, you, got, you do a lot of shows. How, how's this stack up? It's awesome, it's awesome. This is the premier storage event every year, and I'm always amazed by how EMC just raises the bar. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had Jeremy Burton on earlier, and, and we had him on uh, the first the first cube we ever did, and he said, you know, you're going to see some great things going forward, and I really have to say, they've, they've, they've stepped it up, you know, the great marketing, but then they deliver, you know, sort of with the products behind the scene. Absolutely. Now, you guys have been partners with EMC forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. You kind of created the sand market, you know, uh, back when you know, the world was struggling to share resources. So where have we come, you know, um, say in the last decade, where, and, and where are we going? Yeah, so you know, it, it, it's interesting, because you're right, SANS have been around for, for a long time, right? But just within even, yeah, maybe the last decade, or even just the last five or six years, mm -hmm. what we've seen um, within the storage area network environment, the changes that have been uh, happening have been pretty phenomenal in terms of, A, fabrics are just getting bigger, right? Um, and a lot of that is just uh, storage growth, right? You just see amounts of petabytes that continue to grow and grow. The number of virtual devices connecting into our fabrics, obviously because of server virtualization, more expansion of storage virtualization, um, continues to drive, right, highest, highest levels. The diversity of the devices actually connected into our fabrics are also much different than they were, you know, five, 10 years ago. Um, you know, dedupe devices, um, flash devices, um, all these other kinds of different things that what we used to do is just you know, connect a physical uh, you know, server to a shared storage array, and now we're connecting bunches of virtual devices and specialty devices at larger levels of scale that we ever did before, right? So you guys obviously you know, known for your fiber channel expertise, deep, uh -huh. deep expertise, hardened stack, um, and, and so, but people sort of poo-poo fiber channel. Ah, fiber channel, it's, fiber channel's dead. Is fiber channel dead? So I can show you an article back in 2000 by old friend uh, Denny Connor. Um, that said fiber no channel was dead. Uh -huh. And actually I have this little collage that I do that every year shows somebody writing a story about how fiber channel's dead. And then on top of that, I show the overall fiber channel market growing every single year, right? So the conversation's over, right? It, it just, it's, it's such a core element of the enterprise today, as well as the service provider community, um, especially in the managed hosting side, that it's, it's really, it's like we need to move on. <laughs> Right? Yeah, so, the discussion's over, right? So, so, the, so the reason I, I bring that up is because I talk to a lot of practitioners in the Wikibon community that are, yeah. I, would, I would characterize them as fiber channel bigots. They, yeah. they, they, they're not moving, they just, and they don't trust. It's a matter of, of trust uh, yeah. is really the issue. W why is that? Well, if you look at how fiber channel was created um, from the beginning, right? It was created purpose-built for the most important types of uh, data communication within an enterprise, right? So that was, it was its purpose built for that. Unlike, let's see how Ethernet evolved, which is Ethernet's great, right? But it's very general purpose, it does lots of things, right? Um, but SANS and Fiber Channel SANS were purpose built for storage and for the most important applications, right? That enterprises count on, right? It's foundational to these enterprises, right? And because of, of that, because of its really purpose built nature, the built-in resiliency, the enterprise class scalability, all of these capabilities were built into it that makes it, you know, these types of things that customers would say, I will never abandon that, right? Because it's never let me down. And that's why I think you just see that continued resiliency around fiber channel. And why that whole conversation around is fiber channel there or not, it's over, right? It's, it's everybody acknowledges Gartner and IDC have very clear charts about the growth of the number of petabytes of fiber channel grown in the future, and they still show it on top. And right? the technology roadmap evolves, right? Yeah, I, absolutely. We've, we have double speed, we add capabilities. Um, you know, we launched a capability called Fabric Vision last year. 
um, really around driving down then the operational costs of a fiber channel. For the most part, when you manage a fiber channel environment, you need a minimum staff to go do it. You really do. Uh, but our customers come back and say, as part of this transformation of our enterprise IT is becoming more services oriented, right? It's not about just deploying uh, VMs or LUNs anymore, it's about adding value to the enterprise. They come to me and say, you know what? You guys are the expert in fiber channel, make it dramatically easier to go and deploy it. To the point where our goal is, is we can have our customers deploying fiber channel stands and they need to know nothing about fiber channel. Yeah. That so, is actually our goal. So, so, so Jack, you know, some of the, this discussion, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, it's legacy. Because, yeah. you, you know, if you think back, you know, eight years ago, you know, oh, fiber channel, it's this separate network and it's harder to do and, you know, fiber channel is a lot easier today Pricing between fiber channel and Ethernet, you know, it's a wash. I, I say for the most part, customers aren't choosing it based on you know price for the most part. Is it correct. is the skill set. It's the you know what they have. You, you said that this is the premier storage show. I, I would say that this is also you know if not the one of the leading storage networking shows. Um, but I wonder then if you could talk about because if you talk about networking in general and storage networking, and they, they do overlap and there's lots of similarities there, but they are different, which is why here at EMC World, I think if, if you're involved in storage networking, there's a lot of those folks there. Can you talk a little bit of that dynamic about storage networks versus just networking as, as an industry? Yeah, and um, you know, in the end, we all interconnect, right? So there is some, you know, a lot of similarities, but what we've found is, if you think about what fiber channel networks do, it's really not about the FCP, it's not about the protocol, it's about delivering performance workloads at scale, right? So if you think about that and then you think about a lot of the other great things that EMC and, and others are talking about here, the notion of having networks that can deliver that level of scale and performance independent of the protocol is becoming a much more interesting conversation, right? Um, and this notion of, you know what, I'm going to deploy dedicated networks irrespective of a protocol, right? Because this information flow is so important Right? Um, that the discussion of the importance of the network in this, in uh, w w the mission critical large scale workloads is the interesting conversation, right? And that's why, you know, um, as part of Brocade's strategy, you know, in addition to fiber channel fabrics, we deploy Ethernet fabrics, right? And the goal is, hey, if it's a network connection you really don't care about, whatever, right? But if it's a performance kind of workload, you know, Hadoop workloads, large scale NAS environments, large scale iSCSI environments, right? The network is a critical component, right? And I think people here that come to this show, um, ones that maybe have uh, deployed um, you know, storage networking, understand the importance of performance scalable networks, right? And know that you know, having those networks you know, separate, dedicated towards those workloads is a vital part of, of the discussion, right? So it's very exciting, it's a, it's a very important part of this uh, EMC world and it will be, continue to be in all kind of the, the major trends moving forward. Yeah, so, so Jack, uh, you know, Brocade works with tons of partners across the industry. We see you guys at lots of shows. You, you, you participated in the Cube uh, at, at yeah. some of the other storage events here. Yeah. But you know, when I come to this show, I mean, Brocade is everywhere. You yeah. know, I, I want to give you guys kudos, first of all, the, the charity Thank water you. Uh, so, you know, uh, that was work great. that you're doing with EMC is, is fantastic. I did the charity walk, yep. uh, you know, $10 uh, you know, given to that, and, and that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's wearing Brocade awesome. t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's Brocade event, but you know, what's, what, what, what's new this year? You know, what, what, what do you got from the EMC partnership and, and from Brocade that, that you guys are showing off at the show? Yeah, so I think uh, certainly what's near and dear to my heart is our advanced integration we're doing with Viper. Um, when, when EMC launched Viper uh, initially, you know, we were right there with them in terms of having uh, um, integration with our solution as part of their solution, because you're right, I mean, they, these are integrated uh, entities. Um, and as they launched the, the new version of Viper, we're expanding that, right? We're adding uh, fiber channel routing and um, um, other kinds of capabilities. So certainly from my perspective, that's you know, certainly near and dear to my heart. Um, the advancements that um, you know, EMC is extending some of their enterprise capabilities down the VNXE line um, with fiber channels in, in particular, that's exciting for us because that's a you know, new market and a lot of expanding uh, regions, right? Expanding economies. Um, so, uh, had some real, real good, uh, exciting things there as well. So, Jack, I, I wonder if you can comment on this. Uh, you know, if I look at some of the big trends, you know, software-defined data center yep. is definitely a big one, and you guys definitely have a bunch of plays you're pushing in there. If I look at kind of the hyperscale environments, um, you know, that tends to be really an Ethernet play. Although, yep. I mean, even even there, I see things like you have compute project. You know, there's fiber channel there. Yep. OpenStax, uh, you fiber know, got, got got fiber channel there. But you know, we're, we're going to see you know. 
some some segregation in, in the marketplace. Um, you know, w what do you see for the future of Fiber Channel in some of yeah. these new environments? You know, again, and I go back to, you know, at Brocade, whether it's Fiber Channel, whether it's Ethernet, whether it's virtual fabrics, you know, we don't care, right? What we really care about is delivering the network's purpose built for performance and scale, right? And in hyperscale environments, that's what we're going to be focused on. Yeah. So whatever that protocol is, we'll go for it. If it's Ethernet, we're all in on Ethernet, right? Yeah, yeah, if I, it's I, a completely virtual kind of infrastructure, we're all there as well. But, the, but what Brocade, as, as you know, our vision is being you know, the data center, you know, networking provider of choice, that is a protocol independent um, statement, and that's where we're going to go drive to. But again, important workloads um, at scale, that is what Brocade is all about. So yeah, I, 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 I got to ask you about the, the Viper integration. So how should we think about that? So you think about software-defined storage, software-defined yes. anything, I think about all this, all this function locked inside of a box, inside of a controller, um, hidden, un inaccessible. And I think about software-defined as sort of extracting it, yep. whether it's function yep. or metadata, and making it available and allowing us to use it in, in new ways. Is that how we should think about uh, Viper, or should we think about Viper differently, where you sort of still need the integration of the physical hardware, and that over time it will evolve into a fully software-defined, or does it come out software-defined out of the out of the womb? Help us went through that. Yeah, and uh, you know, certainly my view, um, but my understanding of Viper is it is a fully abstracted, you know, um, software-defined storage suite, right? Covering the entire uh, portfolio of uh, EMC offerings as well as other, you know, heterogeneous. So let me ask it differently. How do yeah. I get to your function? How do I get to brocade function? through Viper, what, what do I need to do as a customer to do that? I got to uh, buy a box still, correct? Or yeah, I have a, right. I have so, a box, So right? the, the assumption is, yeah. there's an underlying SAN there from right, Brocade. Okay. So right. I have it, so it's existing, right. it's an asset. And then through those uh, uh, Viper interfaces, if there's uh, certain commands that you need to do, certain things that you need to run that involve an interface with the SAN, that's what Viper takes care of seamlessly, right? So we provided those interfaces into our switches for uh, the Viper offering. So from a customer perspective, the experience is that they're just working with Viper. Okay, so that obviously the customer, that's great for a customer who's got some VNXs and some VMAXs and yeah. maybe a Centera. Um, okay, so they can consolidate that. Where do you see that going over time from, from your standpoint? Do you see extracting your function out of the box and actually making it available as a pure software yeah, so play? Or is that, is that, so is that going to happen in our lifetimes or does it need to happen? Yeah, so one of our strategies around, um, actually uh, you know, all, of our, of all of our various fabrics, but you know, getting, you know, specifically in the fiber channel fabric is, for the management plane of fiber channel, our strategy is to make that as open as possible. And, and we have a couple of good proof points on that. Certainly Viper's one, mm -hmm. right? We've had a lot of uh, recent um, new integration with VMware. Um, and as Stu just mentioned, um, we're supporting, uh, supporting OpenStack, right? So we submitted into uh, you know, the Ice House release of 24, uh, just, excuse me, in April, in the Ice House release, you know, fiber channel sans zoning, right? So whether it's, it's you know, public cloud open stack, whether it's private, we want to make as open as possible the information coming out of our SANS to be consumed and utilized by those software defined storage and or orchestration tools, right? So we're moving to RESTful interfaces across the board to go and really enable that. So you guys are making a big bet on OpenStack. I mean, that's pretty clear. Yeah, but, but as well as you know, within the enterprise, VMware, EMC, you know, those are our you know, chosen partners as well. You know? Excellent. All right, Jack, well, we appreciate you coming on theCUBE, yeah. sharing your insights. Thanks, guys. And, uh, it was fun. We'll be watching. Uh, you, you're right. going to be in Atlanta next week or no? Uh, no, I won't Brocade be. will be there in force, yeah. right? Yeah, right. that's, uh, that's going to take a break. <laughs> yeah, ditto. But the Cube will be there. All right. All right, everybody, so keep it right there. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're live here from EMC World 2014, and this is theCUBE.